don't want to get anything on the shirt. It's rented. All right. Thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. No problem. Is this your only thing today? Uh, no, I got four more appointments after this one. Yikes. Yeah. All right. How's it look? It's a little shiny. All right. All right. Okay, that's probably good. Okay. I'll probably drink this when we're all done. Oh, great. Perfect. How many times does she have to call? Pick up the kids, nope. Okay. Okay, quiet on set. <laughs> Camera speed. Marker. Science density, scene 1A. Settle. And action. You know, I want to... I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. What's weird about this, my grandma has one of these. <coughs> I mean, how? Hey, you know, it looks like we're just goofing around the kitchen, but we're not. We're learning some very, very cool physical science today. A little pomegranate juice and some white grape juice and some orange juice. I know what you're thinking. We're going to make something. We are, but we're actually going to control the layers. Look at this. We have complete separated layers here with white on the bottom and the orange juice here in the middle and the pomegranate on top. And why? Because of a little something called density. Now, this is fun, but way, way, way too simple. I know you've seen this on the internet before. So let's do more layers. More layers means a better understanding of density means we need to go get a bunch of stuff. Today's laboratory, this glass cylinder. Now, we're going to want to layer liquids in this glass cylinder. And online, pretty easy. You can find three, no problem at all. Kids in middle school, five, homework. Seven, not so bad, but we're going to push the limits and say we have to do nine of them. Right? And the criteria is this material has to be found at a grocery store or a department store. So we're not going to use anything crazy that you'd have to go to, uh, for example, like a, a chemistry department and try to find. In order to do this, we need to know two things. Number one, we need to know how the liquids interact with one another. And number two, we need to know something about the densities. First of all, let's talk about emissibility. And the simplest of layering tricks, oil and water. Just water and vegetable oil. They don't mix because they're said to be immiscible. Immiscible simply means that they're not mixable. Even when shaken, they'll separate. So your favorite salad dressing, for example, will separate even when it's shaken into oil and water. The reason they're immiscible is because um, they're not like substances chemically, right? If you look at this, uh, water is a polar substance, meaning that uh, with the H2O molecule, there's actually a dipole moment. Did I get too nerdy? I did. Just understand that water is a polar substance. This oil is a non-polar substance. The liquids will never mix, even when shaken. But that's not the only trick. The other trick, density. It's not a matter of memorizing all of these things. You simply go to Google and you type in what is the density of each of the liquids that you're looking for. Or better yet, just find the whole list of densities of common household items you're going to have to search, but you'll find some cool things. For example, you're going to see water here at uh, room temperature is 0.9998. Let's just say it's 1. So the density of water is 1. That's gram per cubic centimeter, whatever. Uh, if you take a look at vegetable oil over here, it's going to be 0.918 or another version of that 0.922. So we know that oil and water won't mix. We know their densities are separated. And so now it's a matter of just finding densities for some common household liquids and to see whether or not you can layer them. It's another trip to the store because you're going to have to buy a lot of stuff to beat us. Nine layers. Well, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Here is an array of nine items that we think will layer fairly nicely for you. It's going to be a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky, and prepare for the unexpected because when you go online and you take a look at the densities here, you're going to see that, for example, rubbing alcohol is said to be have a density of 0.79 and lamp oil 0.8 separated by one one hundredth of a point, right? Yet, we find that the lamp oil sits on top and the rubbing alcohol is underneath. So, whatever ex you, you expect that's going to happen according to the numbers, just plan on possibly uh, the liquids reversing their order, which makes this even more fun. Ready for nine? Here we go. 
All right, let's do a lineup of our subjects in density order. Ready? Here it goes. Honey, easy to find. Light corn syrup, 100% maple syrup. There's whole milk, there's Dawn dish soap, and there's water. Followed by vegetable oil. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol, and finally colored lamp oil. Now you can't color your own oil, that's why we're using the lamp oil, but uh, this may be the hardest thing to find. Hit your department store, find out where they have uh, oil lamps, uh, citronella stuff for the torches. Bottom line, you can get your hands on the lamp oil. This completes our nine layers. Well, we want our layers evenly spaced, and so we took the liberty of measuring out the same amount in each of the cups that you see here. First layer is always the easiest, it's the thickest, it's honey, and it goes directly in the bottom. Try to keep it off the sides. If it can go directly into the middle and down, it's perfect. All right, we want every last drop, because this is the stuff that's expensive. All right. To this layer goes the light corn syrup. Now, you're going to find that some of these liquids are colorless, and so we also took the liberty of coloring them just to give us some nice variation. So we chose green for this layer here since it's matched nicely against this part. Uh, sometimes I'll pour down the side, but not with this thick, viscous material. I'm going to pour again in the very middle and see if I can keep that layer in the very center and try to keep it even all the way around. This is a great example of two liquids where the densities are different. They're not immiscible. If you stir them together, they will mix. So this is just a, something where the honey has a greater density than the light corn syrup. Unfortunately, up to this point, all these have been fairly expensive and it's not gonna stop with this. We want 100% maple syrup. Now, some syrups have uh, high fructose and that would kind of mess things up. And so we found that this 100% works fairly well. Again, your experimentation will, uh, will help you. I'm gonna pour it into the very center carefully, again, not dripping down the edge just yet. I'm gonna leave that for the uh, less viscous material. So here is the 100% maple syrup. Let me remind you just to be patient. Going too quickly at this point, we'll start to get those liquids to mix because again, they are mixable. They just have different densities at this point. Patience will pay off. Perfect. We got three layers. Well, it's been easy up to this point, just took a little patience, now we move to the milk. This is not as viscous, right? Uh, its viscosity is, is much less, just means it's a lot runnier. That's where a new technique comes in with the turkey baster. So if you don't have a turkey baster, go buy a turkey baster. And after you buy a turkey baster, before you do this, you just take some water and you dip this in here like this, and you um, just make sure that the turkey baster works. Now you can do this by squirting somebody, that's always fun, or, you can try this. Watch this. This is going to be like you're going to get two experiments in one episode. Watch this. Ready? You blow across the top. Pretty cool experiment, isn't it? Density science, scene 7A. Oh, hey. So, um, on to the milk. And for the milk, you're gonna need to have a turkey baster. I got it. Just get one at the store. This is what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull up the liquid in the turkey baster and then we're gonna slowly kind of get it close to the layer and drip it down inside. It just helps keep it from mixing. So I'm gonna use the milk here, like this. And remember on this one here, we're using whole milk. So we want as much fat in here as possible. And try to get just a little bit more. All right, it's all in the technique. So I'm gonna slowly kind of work it down in here like this. And see if I can slowly just add it to that layer. So you're gonna see that there is a little bit of mixing going on. There's not a lot that I can do about that. I'm just gonna be as careful as I can and to try to get that milk to float on top of the 100% maple syrup. We're getting close. It's the first part that you get the greatest amount of mixing. After that, the layer is pretty well established. And uh, we're almost there. I know, it's compelling. 
We got ourselves four layers, not bad. Patience is a virtue. Uh, one of the secrets is you gotta clean out the turkey baster every time, otherwise you're mixing the liquids and so forth. So let it settle for a second. We're on to some soap. Now we've chosen the Dawn dish soap just because it's blue and so it gives us a good color. If there's a, another color that you like or something else that you find, go ahead and try it. It really is just experimentation. The hard part is you don't want to experiment now because you've already got too much money into it. So find a small test tube or a small little uh, um, container that you can, you can test this in and, uh, and uh, see if you can do that before you move on to the real big one. All right, this one's very viscous. It's going to be in a couple layers, but I think we can do it. Now the difference in density between milk and, uh, and uh, the dish soap is uh, a difference between like 0 0.03 and 0 0.06. It's not much there at all. So it's just lucky that we've got them to separate. I know the science supports it, but sometimes it just doesn't separate well. And in this particular case, these two seem to work great. And if you're counting, that's five. Well, now we're at water. And the hard part here is that everything uh, up to this point has been over the 1.0 mark. Uh, the latest one being 1.03 for a density. The heaviest one down here, the honey, 1.42. Now we're at water. Water is theoretically room temperature 1.00, correct? So let's color it. Uh, yellow seems to work well in this coloring sequence. Mix it up and slowly start to work it in. All right, let's pull up just as much of the water as we can in our turkey baster, eliminate any uh, room for error here, and slowly try to work it in. Good. I'm gonna use the side here to kind of work it down as well. So not only am I controlling it with the turkey baster, but I'm gonna use the sides here to slowly lower it on top and allow that first layer to form. All right, this one, as you can see, is tricky. There's a little bit of mixing going on at the last second. But it doesn't look that bad here. Watch this, let me spin it around so you can kind of see what it looks like from all sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. The water layer is always the toughest because there's going to be some mixing that goes on. No matter how careful you are, unless you're small scale and you're using a pipette and just a test tube, see the little mixing that's going on right here? We're going to let that settle out for 24 hours and uh, this water will become even more clear. I think it's smooth sailing after this point because now on top of the water goes vegetable oil. All right, this should be fairly easy because that vegetable oil has no problem resting on top of the water. I just need to be careful putting it in, but even if it dips down into the other one, uh, it's our first immiscible liquid here in the, uh, the mixture, and uh, it should go in with no problem at all. Now there's so many different types of oil to try. You could probably do a, uh, a density layer with just different types of oil, like um, uh, soy oil and peanut oil and vegetable oil and whatever else might be. In this particular case, we went cheap with just the vegetable oil that we could find at the grocery store. Ah, the layering's already taking place. It's easy to see. There's our separation. This is looking good. All right, it's time for the last part here, and I'm, I'm gonna be brave. I think I can do it just like this without there being much mixing. Oh, that's looking good. Here we go. This Ta-da, that's layer number seven. Got a nice clear layer of vegetable oil there, perfect. On top of the vegetable oil goes uh, rubbing alcohol. Now, it, you could use just the colorless rubbing alcohol, right? But we added a couple drops of food coloring, easy to be able to color it. Um, it's gonna behave like water, of course. And so be, just be very careful as you're adding it that you don't add it too quickly. That looks like enough. All right, down the side it goes. Now it shouldn't be too bad because it slowly wants to settle out on top of the vegetable oil. 
It's just a matter of it's hard to control. I can't use any of that suction, so to speak, with the uh, turkey baster to hold it in place. So I'm literally just letting it kind of dribble down in, into uh, to that layer. Looking at it from the top down is not very impressive. You really have to change your angle. Oh, I think we've got almost everything. Take a look at it from the side. Oh, that's awesome. And that's eight. Last but not least, lamp oil. Now this is gonna behave similar to the rubbing alcohol that we had before. So it's gonna be hard to control with the turkey baster. You're just gonna be able to pour it down the side. But we can do it. And the scariest part, here we go, right to the side. Slowly allowing it to form that first layer. And you might see a little bit of mixing there, and if you do, you're gonna see color mixing because that red and that blue will start to mix. But I'm already seeing a layer form, so this is looking good. Did I mention patience 22 times so far? It truly is uh, what you're gonna have to have because you're gonna wanna squeeze it, you're gonna wanna just let it happen, and it's not gonna work. So slowly just let it work itself in place. Look at this. This is pretty nice. Look at that. Bam. A little more. And we got it. That's a nine layer density column all the way from honey clear up to lamp oil. All materials that you can find at the grocery store. Everything that you might need. But we need to take it just one step Further. You hear what I hear? Angels are singing. Yes. Ta -da. It's a nine layer density column using materials you can find at the grocery store. No exotic things, toluene, benzene, all those other things that the cool chemistry teachers have. This is the household nine layer uh, density column. But you can't stop there because wouldn't it be cool if you could find common household items like ping pong balls, uh, soda bottle caps, beads, and so forth that we could drop in that would actually float on each of the layers? Answer, yes, that would be cool. Here's how to do it. Start with a bolt. Here it goes. It's slowly working its way down. Remember how viscous that material is. It's poking through the light corn syrup and finally, bam, right to the honey. Next, a popcorn kernel. How do I know that a popcorn kernel will work? I don't know, we've just practiced it. Here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. And where does this one land? The water. Next, the dye. Where will it land? Bingo, settling out on top of the milk. Grape tomato, place your bets, place your bets. There it goes. Right on top of the milk. Next, tiny little pony beads. Where will they go? There it is, right through the oil resting right on top of the water. Now a soda bottle cap. Because of the way a soda bottle cap is shaped, it'll just sit on the top. So that's why you're gonna need to have something to push it down and to see where it eventually lands. So, uh, it has no problem with the vegetable oil. Nice. Has no problem with the rubbing alcohol. Look at this rests right on top of the oil. And finally, ping pong ball. Where do you think? Right on top. Look at this, nine layers. Look at all the materials resting in between. We don't have something in every single layer that's gonna be your job. We have to leave some openings for you. We would love to see, let me see, one, two. In this particular column here, we could easily do 11, maybe 12. Take it on as a challenge. We want to see what you can come up with and uh, we'll put it up on the channel. All right, perfect. 
Here's my suggestion. Take a picture of your nine layer density column with all the materials floating in position right now. You're going to wait 24 hours because you'll be amazed what happens in 24 hours. Certain objects may float up to another layer, may fall down or sink to a, a lower layer. You might even see layers change places. That's what you need the picture for. We're going to come back in 24 hours and see where everything pans out. Well, they say that great things happen to those who wait. Well, look, 24 hours later, and it is awesome. Now, the layers did not change positions, like sometimes they will, um, but the clarity is so much better, and the objects did move around to match the, uh, the levels that they should be at. Take a look. At the very bottom there, there's the bolt. Sitting on top of that light corn syrup is the uh, kernel of corn. You just have to trust that the dye is sitting in the milk. It is the tomato sitting right there in the Dawn dish soap. And you can see why you have to be so careful with the water poking down because if the water gets into the Dawn dish soap and then down into the milk because there's such a high fat concentration, you get to see these little artifacts that are kind of shooting up. Makes it very cool. Um, you can see the beads sitting here in the layer here. Uh, right here, the, um, uh, the cap is sitting right where it should be on the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol. And finally, with no problem at all, we've got the ping pong ball on the top. We know you can do better. Send us the videos. There are nine layers here, seven objects. We would love to show something cool that you've come up with as well. Ready, set, go. we do an episode of the Spangler Effect talking about density and layers without doing the famous wine water density challenge. And to do that, you're going to need these four glasses and a pitcher of water. Watch this. It's just water and a, a glass here. Whenever I pour with my right hand, oh, look at that, you get wine. Whenever I pour with my left hand, you just get, you guessed it, water. Whenever I pour with my right hand, you get wine. All right, this is a horrible looking wine. And whenever I pour with my left hand, you get water. A little bit more water here. A little bit more wine here. Perfect. We have just two colors. So it's not nearly as fancy as our um, previous nine layer density. I don't even know which hand I'm using anymore. It doesn't matter, all right? I think we're, all right, here we're good here. All right, done. The object here is to use this cylinder to handle our densities, all right? So, very first thing that's going to happen here is that the water goes in. Oh, I'm sorry. You do the water here, and you cover it up like this. So you cover it up. Then, remember how careful we had to be last time? Not with this one. Watch this. Oh, that's looking good. Oh, perfect. Another little bit of water here. And the last layer of wine. This is perfect. If everything is as it should be, and I think it is, watch this. That's how you layer. Look at that. Water, wine, water, wine. It's perfect. There are two different ways to do this. Number one, you have to calculate the densities and be very, very careful pouring them in. I didn't do that. Method two, just get yourself one of these. If you have this, it's easy. 